Not too long ago, on February 19th, Europa League winner Oliver Glasner was appointed as the man to take charge of relegation near Crystal Palace. And it's fair to say recently, the Eagles have shared some fantastic displays with a 1-0 masterclass at Anfield and a recent 5-2 demolition at Selhurst Park to David Moyes' West Ham. Today we'll be entailing who Oliver Glasner is for those unaware, how he's revolutionised his team, his tactics and the future of Crystal Palace under the Austrian head coach. Now Oliver Glasner is a 49 year old manager who has shared time as director of football and manager at the same time with Austrian side LASK for four years but also has undergone stints as an assistant manager at Salzburg and head coach of German side Wolfsburg and FCU lead. But most notably to his CV was his Europa League win at Eintracht Frankfurt as he defeated Barcelona at the Nou Camp along the way whilst taking the title home after edging past Rangers in the final on penalties. Before Glasner's reign began, Palace supporters were yelling for the departure of Roy Hodgson. Despite his respectable status amongst the fans at Selhurst Park, it was definitely the time to go if the club wanted to move forward and aspired to bring success to the north of Croydon. There were a few names in contention for the Palace job, including high-flying Ipswich Town manager Kieran McKenna, but Oliver Glasner was the man to seize the job, and so he has, as Palace sit ninth in the form table, with their last five games involving title race contenders Liverpool and Manchester City. Under Roy Hodgson, there was a large scale of mismanagement to player fitness, negative tactics that saw Palace concede lots of chances whilst not creating too many, and overall a very uninspired set of players that weren't very progressive with the ball and decision making in the final third was pretty poor. Since Glasner has arrived, Palace have adopted a much faster and direct style of attacking football that sees their attacking players from Mateta, Elise, Eze and their wing-backs Muniz and Mitchell see plenty more attacking success and overall responsibility. This style is supported by Glasner's preferred 3-4-3 slash 3-4-2-1 shape where they may alternate to a 5-4-1 when defending in deep positions where they did this from time to time at Anfield. But probably the most impressive aspect of Glasner's influence on this Crystal Palace team is their attacking success. Palace aim for around three players attacking their box, but if the opposition is deep, then the wing-backs will join providing a numerical advantage for Glasner's attack. As the other two of the three front line look to expose space and create a passing option in behind with quick and direct plays. When Eberichi Eze and Michael Elise play, especially in central areas where they can combine and access the ball, Palace will always create numerous chances and this is supported heavily by the quick combination plays involving Adam Morton, a January signer from Blackburn who is exceptional quick combination play, progressing the ball, covering yards and using his passing range to effect. Wharton allows Palace to progress the ball up very quickly, getting the ball to the likes of Eze and Elise who gives the Eagles the very best chance of scoring but sometimes the midfield space can be very compact and tight and teams will know these two players have the most influence which is why the use of the wing backs are very important. The wing backs have wide levels of responsibility of their flank. When out of possession, they press high and when in possession, they look to position themselves high so that they provide themselves as a passing option, create overloads and stretch the opponent's shape. The wing backs are easily found in possession through many different combinations as the shape is very well coordinated so that players aren't isolated. But one of the very efficient routes is the use of Adam Walton's, but in particular, Joachim Anderson's passing range that access the wide players with a riveting ease, which helps Palace position two players against the opponent's fullback. Anderson commonly steps out aggressively on and off the ball and uses his longer passing to help Palace progress up the pitch a few passes quicker than normal. To avoid being caught out in transition though, Palace look to maintain their two midfielders back to minimise the central spaces. The quick passing, off the ball movement and overall structure the Palace players are following is extremely efficient as Palace have netted 8 goals in their past 3 encounters with 13 big chances created whilst 2 out of the 3 of them teams being Manchester City and Liverpool. Glasner has proven this to be a very flexible shape and philosophically across his managerial career meaning when Palace come up against a range of different teams they won't find too many problems breaking teams down as there are a lot for Glasner to still potentially introduce from his Europa League winning Frankfurt side. Now looking at how they play out from a goal kick, Dean Henderson usually goes long 
towards the head and Mateta to look for that second ball to start an attacking pursuit of the ball. This very well may change once Palace have more players back such as Lerma, Gerhi, Decore from injury as playing out from the back with Joe Ward and Nathaniel Klein in your back three is a recipe for disaster so Glasner hasn't quite been able to implement his impressive plan out structure. Moving on to how Palace press and defend, they press with the complete aim to minimise space for the opponents to move into rather than pressing intensely on just one player with the ball. By reducing the space, it leads the opposition to a long ball to the striker or attacker, where typically Wacky Manderson rushes out to the receiver with aggression and intensity. In the future, we may very well see quicker players such as Mark Gerhi or new purchases that contain more pace to do this more, but Anderson is a great foundation in the middle of the pack three and embodies a lot of the qualities you want in a modern day centre back, which will certainly be an asset that Glasnow will be eager to keep in this new era at Selhurst Park. When the opposition plays out and the opponent midfielder comes deep to help the team play out as there's no space, the left centre midfielder and Will Hughes sometimes looks to come alive and press instead of maintaining the two structure with Wharton, as the Blackburn Academy graduate covers a lot of ground and can run for days, meaning Palace can commit to this extra man of press as Wharton's anticipation and ball winning ability is top. Switching the focus to the wide areas, Mitchell and Munez press intensely as soon as the ball is switched to a wide area, which has similar parallels to Ruben Amarim's sporting Luton side, who commit to this and both teams succeed at forcing the opposition back and maintaining control brilliantly with and without the ball. After this line of press, it's the defence that will come to action and Palace's defence has been fairly solid considering the names out injured and who it is that's starting in their back line. The defence is a line of five and the midfield shapes as a four which is typically interpreted as a very negative defensive shape but it minimises any sort of space for the opposition to venture into and forces them to opt for long passes where they risk the control of the game and a fast Crystal Palace counter-attack. This 5-4-1 shape was also used to success in Frankfurt's 3-2 historic win at the new camp to eliminate them from the Europa League quarter-finals. Further talking on the defence, it's not afraid to clear and aggressively jump into tackles when runners are delving into open spaces, and Glasner has supported Nathaniel Klein in the unfamiliar right centre-back role by utilising right wing-back Daniel Munez to stay back a bit more and provide the defence with cover and support when needed. Although this then limits their options going forward and shows reliance on Mitchell and Eze going down at left, it showcases Glasner's defensive priorities and ability to target and find solutions to the on-the-field weakness. But with everything said, the Austrian head coach is doing a terrific job at Crystal Palace and they're most definitely one to watch going into the 24-25 Premier League season. If the Eagles back and support Glasner's vision, then I could definitely see their rise in the Premier League table to be nothing short of inevitable. And the Brighton versus Crystal Palace rivalry will be one of taste in the near future. Thank you for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, make sure to check out my channel as I detail this level of football analysis on a weekly basis. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.